Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is Isabel Georgelis with the Tucson Hispanic Chamber, and we are excited to be here again today, this Thursday, with our digital discussions. Today, we have the pleasure of having Marisol Flores Aguirre uh, join us. She is a two-time University Arizona graduate and holds an executive MBA from Eller College of Management. Marisol is a small business co consultant for the City of Tucson Economic Division uh, Initiatives office and primarily focuses on supporting local business owners, primarily those who are Spanish speaking. Uh, during this COVID-19 crisis, she has assisted with program rollout, strategy and engagement, getting information to the community and linking them with resources available to help their businesses. Uh, Marisol is also a lecturer and mentor in residence at the McGuire Center for Entrepreneurship. Marisol, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Good morning. Buenos dias a todos. Good morning. Happy to be here. Thanks to the chamber for the invitation to, to be with y'all and, and all the members. I hope everybody's finding themselves safe and, and healthy during this time. Thank so, you. yeah, Isabel, um, I know that you invited me to talk about a couple of programs. How do you want us to get started this morning? Uh, absolutely. Start first with some of the things that um, we've been doing to collaborate and get information out to the community and then possibly some programs that we should be looking for. And then we can turn it over to a Q&A portion. How does that yeah, sound? That, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds great. And um, I'm used to doing most things in Spanish right now. So, si se me sale un poquito el español, uh, it's going to be a, a bilingual, I'm sure, Zoom. Um, so, uh, just throwing that out there because sometimes I tend to switch and then don't realize. So if anybody needs me to switch back or switch forward, let me know. I'm happy to do that. Um, so I've been part of the economic initiatives team now. It seems like a really long time, right? In COVID, time is relative. So it seems like, was that yesterday? Was that last week? Was that a month ago? So about six weeks ago, I came on as part of the COVID or as part of the economic initiatives team to help support um, the community specifically linking them with resources for um, for their small business during this COVID crisis. And so, um, under the leadership of Barbara Coffey and her team, I've been having I've been um, working at that. And so, one of the things that we first started to do was reach out to community organizations that we know um, have been supporting the small business community for a really long time. And so, that's how I was able to link up with Isabel um, and through through our conversations and through some of the small business uh, dialogue that we were having, what we noticed was that there were some trends, right? Some things that small business owners across the board seem to, to need some support on. And so we designed a collaboration between the Economic Initiatives team, um, the Tucson Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Arizona Bilingual Magazine, uh, the YWCA of Southern Arizona and Vibin. And for the last, um, this is our fifth week, right, Isabel? Today will be our fifth, our fifth class. So we developed a series of trainings and offerings specifically in Spanish to support Spanish language um, dominant business owners, uh, linking them with resources um, as far as from the city, but also um, providing an intro into some trainings that I know that the Chamber and the YW and Vibin have been doing for a really long time. So anything from how to get online and start or launch or expand your online presence to um, an introduction to to your accounting and how that's important um, as well as resources that were coming out of the city with regards to some of the rollout um, and programs and i think that's something that um, isabel wanted me to talk about a little bit this morning um, so there are still uh, classes and trainings available, of course, through the organizations, but the collaboration itself is on its fifth week. Um, we have a class tonight at six o'clock. Um, you can connect at, or you can register at connecttucson.com or with the chamber um, for that class. And it's a one hour intro, but it's really designed for the small business owner. Um, it's interactive and gives an opportunity for folks to ask questions. So it's, it's, a, it's a helpful tool. And that's one of the things that's been super important in this time um, for small business owners, I know, and for the community at large, right? Some of us feel really disconnected uh, porque nosotros estamos acostumbrados a, a, otro, a otra forma de, de estar. Entonces, being together and, 
and having lunch and taking coffee and, and doing all of these things that, that um, helped create that feeling of community. And so um, we're having to do it a little differently. So I'm excited to be here today. I have my, my coffee on my, <laughs> in this really big cup that gets me through. But, um, but yeah, just, just uh, wanted to give a little bit of background on that. Is there anything that I missed there, Isabel? I was trying to keep the noise down. Uh, absolutely, uh, no, you, you really shared a lot of key points. I think what's important um, is just the opportunity to collaborate, uh, I think has been really good. And when you speak about how we've come together, our efforts and, and desires to amplify what we're doing, mm -hmm. and we really value uh, you're taking the lead on, uh, on that and um, leveraging resources that are available through the city of Tucson that I'm not sure everybody is aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, that um, is going. Uh, y así como comentas, es para las personas que hablan español, uh, el intento es amplificar lo que se está haciendo y los servicios que están, uh, que pueden um, uh, utilizar. Así es que gracias por la oportunidad. Thank you. No, same, same to y'all. And, and one of the really beautiful things I think that I find in Tucson is that openness to collaboration. We know that as a community, um, we are a big city but we're also a tight-knit community and so being able to get resources to the folks that are that are in need of those resources being able to amplify the work that one another is doing especially during this time um, is critical and so that was one of the um, the major pieces that that came together so that this collaboration could happen and from that a lot of other things are are in the works this this conversation um, getting information out to members and and so forth um, so I'm going to transition now to a couple of points um, that I've been getting a lot of questions about um, and then of course turning it over to y'all and being able to um, answer any questions that I can or commit to getting you the information if I don't have it. Isabel, can I have um, access to the, to the screen? You're good to go. Okay, give me a second. Can everybody see this? Yeah, can y'all see this? Just thumbs up. Yep, okay, perfect. Yes. So this is just, uh, Isabel introduced me, but I've been doing um, economic development work for the city of Tucson, specifically through economic initiatives. And then my focus is on supporting um, local small business owners, principalmente aquellos que hablan español o prefieren recibir su información en español. That's an area that I, that I can help in. Um, so there's a couple of things that I wanted to touch on today that I know Isabel really wanted me to talk about. And so this was a little bit of background on the We Are One Somos Uno continuity grants. So these funds um, were part of the uh, COVID-19 CARES federal dollars that the city of Tucson was able to secure. Um, one of the really incredible things about our mayor and, and city council is that they have been very, very proactive in securing resources for our community. And so not everybody got um, CARES funds in the, same, in the same manner, but we, we were able to get them early on and we were able to designate them early on uh, to support small business owners. And this is just a fraction of, of, of the amount that we received, um, but it is directly related to economic development and small business support. And so that's why I'm talking about it today. So um, let me make sure, yep. So $5.5 million was allocated uh, through the mayor and council to three independent, um, we can say independent partners. So they identified this pool of money that they wanted to be able to activate in the community and get out to, to uh, community members in need. And so, Prior to that, there was a million dollars that was approved by the, by the mayor and council to support small businesses. These were the loan funds, right? The, the initial um, $1 million was designated to support local small business owners. Um, en la cantidad de un millón de dólares era el, el, la cantidad completa de los fondos. And so that $1 million for folks that are curious, that are asking about it, um, that's currently under review. So that was the money um, that was, um, was being dispersed by BDFC. And so if you applied as a small business owner for those funds, that application process is, is um, now closed. 
um, and those applications are under review. And so um, folks in that queue are just waiting for the announcement of what's gonna happen and, and who got identified and those kind of things. So we're currently waiting for that. The other 5.5 million that I just talked about really briefly, um, these, this was a separate fund that came after the million dollars. So there was a $2 million designated for small business relief, um, individual and family relief funds. These are for folks who uh, um, either lost their job or it be it's become very difficult for them to pay their mortgage, their rent, buy groceries, daycare, that kind of stuff, really meant to support and supplement the family and the household. Um, that, that fund of money is $3 million. And then a nonprofit relief fund is for nonprofits to continue operating and that's $500,000. And so those funds uh, were essentially approved within the last month and, um, and will start to roll out. So one of the really important things about those funds that I want y'all to see is on the upper left-hand side, which says that these grants are not open yet. So I don't want anybody on the call to panic and think I haven't heard about it. I don't know anything. Oh my gosh, how do I do this? Don't panic. No se me vayan a, 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 este, a sentir um, desesperados. No se me van a desesperar. Estos fondos todavía no se han abierto. So I point that out because we've been getting a lot of calls about this. And I know this is partially why Isabel wanted me out here today to talk to y'all. So the reason that those have not opened yet is that at the last mayor and council meeting that was last week, the mayor and council approved the final contracts. So as anybody who works in corporate or government or education knows, um, some of these things are process-based. And so the first step was identifying the funds. The second step was making sure of the distribution partners and how those funds were gonna be allocated. The third step was doing all the legal transactions and actually approving um, the application process, et cetera. And so these funds are not open yet, but they are expected to be open very, very soon. I would say probably within the next week to two weeks. Um, but don't hold me to that because things always change and hopefully it's tomorrow, who knows? But, um, but sometimes it can be a little lengthy. And so I wanted to put this slide out because I want it to be very clear to folks who is in charge of what resources and their direct contacts. So the Community Foundation of Southern Arizona is a large foundation in Tucson. They are going to be administering the $500,000 uh, bucket of money, which goes to nonprofits. Um, their phone number is on the screen, uh, but if folks have uh, other questions specifically for them, the number is 7700800, and CFSA uh, will be distributing those funds. The YWCA of Southern Arizona, they are providing the small business grants um, for, sorry, I said that already, small business support grants. And so these grants are primarily for local small business. I know that the criteria is going to be something similar, but not as intense as the loan program. Um, it is going to be for local small businesses under, I believe it's 25 or 50 employees. The grants are up to $10,000 for this pool of money and the total available is $2 million. The YWCA of Southern Arizona will be distributing those funds. They'll also be opening up, all of these member, these member organizations will be opening up the application process on their platform. So at their websites, um, when it's open, that's where you're gonna apply. And that's where you're gonna find all the information about what's the criteria, what do you need, I know that I've been working closely with Magda and Francisca at the YWCA around the small business program. And so specifically for these funds, um, you are gonna wanna have um, a business license. You're gonna wanna have some kind of documentation that shows financials if possible. Um, so you should start to put some of those things together, but it's gonna be up to $10,000 in support. The last fund of money is through the Women's Foundation of Southern Arizona. And the Women's Foundation is gonna be distributing the $3 million, which goes to support families and individuals. My understanding tentatively is that it's $1,200 per family, $700, I believe, for individuals. That's still being, um, I believe it's, I believe that is the, the total amount, um, but those funds will be distributed directly through the foundation. And one of the things that's super important about 
about these resources, these $5.5 million is that they're grant funded, which means that they do not have to be paid back. So some of the other original monies, like the Prestamos, um, the original loan uh, program, that obviously was a loan, it was 0% interest, but you still had to pay that money back. So this money that's coming out and that will be available pretty soon um, is completely, um, is a complete grant. So essentially it's, it's free money to you, but you do have to use it in the ways that are that it's designated you do have to fill out an application as i'm sure you can imagine this is going to be probably um, a very sought after program because this grant funds are are very unique in in the sense of um of being free money to help individuals families and um organizations and small business let's see what i have next there's other additional resources Actually, before I go on, let me go back to this slide. Um, Isabel, are there questions? I, I saw one question. It says, okay. Marisol, are these supportive grants extended to community members interested in individual professional development funding? Do we have an understanding of the limitations? Um, I'm not sure who, if that person can be unmuted and, and we can talk a little bit more about that question, if it's, <laughs> Good morning, Marisol. I apologize for the interruption. Oh. This is oh, Carlos. No. I'm, I work for the University of Arizona as the director. Hi, Carla. How are you? Good. Very nice good to, see. to see you. Thank you for your time, by the way. Thank you for uh, spending this morning with us and sharing all this great information. So I'm interested in knowing um, specifically with the Women's Foundation of Southern Arizona grant. Um, it says to support families and individuals. I've um, many times been approached and asked for different grants available for professional development because um, many institutions and many companies are no longer able to um, budget for that professional development piece. But it's, that, that is such an integral part in the success of any individual on a personal level and as a whole um, from a from a team perspective. So I'm wondering if this is something that individuals can apply for, for professional development. Yeah, that's a really good question, Carla. And I, and I, and I echo that, right? We're in this time where sometimes um, all the needs are so great. And so um, things that, that shouldn't be cut, like professional development in large organizations or in institutions are cut because that's kind of seen as as, as a bonus or as an extra, but we know that, that professional development is intricately involved in, in being able to climb whatever uh, career path or ladder you're on. From my understanding, these funds are um, essentially emergency relief funds. So the, the spirit of these funds is really to support the most vulnerable in our community. And so we know that, um, that if you look at the way that the PPP funds, for example, or the EDIL funds were distributed at a federal level, you had really large corporations taking advantage of these funds and the spirit right. of those funds was supposed to support mom and pop, right? And right. so the same with, with, um, with the family and individual funds, the spirit of these funds, and I believe the way that it's written is to support the most vulnerable families. So the intent is childcare, the intent is groceries, um, rent, car payments, mortgage, that kind of stuff. So this is really meant to, to be a lifeline to mm -hmm. those most vulnerable um, because we know that in our community, um, there's a lot of folks that are really in need, except, especially now that we're seeing the spike in COVID numbers. We're seeing that we are, um, as a community, have seen the largest rise in COVID um, mm -hmm. more than anywhere else basically in the country. And so we know that, that this is gonna prolong um, that, that challenging time for these families. And so really the spirit of this fund is to, is to support those vulnerable folks, not, not for professional development. Yeah. But yeah. I understand the question. And I mean, there are these other funds, right? Like these nonprofit funds or these small business grants that if there are folks that are incorporated that do have a small business that choose to, to use the money for something like that and apply, that mm -hmm. certainly is within the realm of what, um, what can, it can be utilized for within those other categories. 
Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And actually, the, the as you mentioned be, below, the, the one for families and individual support, it makes perfect sense. So one of the programs that we have at the University of Arizona is the Employee Emergency Fund, which is employee funded for employees um, for emergent needs. So I can, I completely understand. But now I'm curious, and I don't know, again, I don't know what the guidelines will be. Um, and I apologize if you mentioned it earlier. One, do we know when these will become available? And two, do you know if there's going to be income guidelines to um, the eligibility process? So those are two really good questions. Um, one is what I'm hoping is within the next two weeks or so, um, these will be available. Mayor and Council has approved the funds. Now the next step is finalizing all the legal documentation. These are federal funds. So as folks know, even though they're grant funded for you as the recipient of the funds, um, you still have some criteria that you have to meet. There's some things that you still have to report. Um, to make sure that when the city reports back on how these care funds were utilized, we're making sure that we utilize them appropriately in the way that they were designed. And so what happens to communities that don't do that is they have to pay the money back. And right. so um, that's, the, that's the hurdle right now is making sure that all our, our T's are crossed, all our, our I's are dotted so that these funds can, 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 can start to be rolled out. In terms of the actual guidelines and criteria, I haven't seen the Women's Foundation put out anything regarding um, like a, an income threshold or anything like that. Uh, I don't know yet. And I think that's the same with all of these, these, um, any of these buckets of money is I saw a general outline and that's available. And I'm sorry, I should have brought a link to that, but I can send that to you, Isabel, if you want to send that out to folks. It is public record. It was part of the mayor and council's package when they reviewed it. Um, so it's part of the, of the meeting um, agenda. And that can be downloaded through the city of Tucson, but I'll do that work for y'all and I'll go get that and then send that to Isabel and she can get it to you. But there was some general outlines there of what was anticipated. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the actual criteria, the, um, the application isn't open. And so since, until the application process is open, um, we, don't have, we don't have that content yet. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I'll, I'll let you carry on. I don't oh, want to overtake this is your... what this is for. No, this is exactly what this is for. Thank you for the Thank questions. You. Yeah, you. of course. Are there other questions regarding some of these funds? Yes, actually, one more. You mentioned that this is for the vulnerable community. Uh, when the, this opens up, are, is it all going to be restricted to online applications or will people be able who maybe aren't set up or it be able to apply in person, or will it be offices that are facilitating this? Again, really, really good question. So the actual delivery um, I'm anticipating is going to be primarily online uh, because of COVID-19, um, but we do understand that there are limitations to that. So one of the things that, that we can do is follow up with um, some of the organizations that are going to be implementing this. Um, and and double check those things. So for example, with some of the other loan programs that had happened beforehand, we have a small business support line number where folks could call and we help link them up um, if, if an application needed to be done over the phone, if they needed to have some translation or interpretation services. Those were things that we were able to help provide um, guidance on and, and make sure that they were linked up. So the the intent of the process to, is to be as accessible as possible, but the actual mechanisms, and this is where I know that um, I'm limited, right? And, and just wanting to be very open about that is that these distributing partners, these are the partners that you're gonna wanna contact for those specific um, types of questions because they're gonna be doing the implementation of the grants. So today I wanted to make sure that everybody knew who was distributing funds, how much was going to be available, the intent of those funds, and then how to get in contact with them. Um, in that, on that note, we do have a small business navigator helpline. The number is 837-4100. This is a city of Tucson uh, line. It's an economic initiatives, um, it's an economic initiatives uh, team. And essentially, this is for anybody who has questions related to really any city of Tucson um, business support needs. And so if this is licensing, if this is procurement, if this is um, 
any of the of the new programs that are coming out where you say, you know what, I don't remember who was doing what and I need to talk to somebody, you can call us there. Um, son completamente bilingüe uh, el equipo que está disponible por parte de la ciudad. Entonces ellos te pueden ayudar a navegar los diferentes recursos. Um, so, so that's really what this um, helpline is for. Also connecttucson.com is a really great resource, not only for all of the webinars that we've been doing and the trainings, they live there, but they also connect you to a multitude of resources across um, the region. And so whether you need, um, again, some of those tools or actually some more data or, hey, I just, the city of Tucson is too big and it's hard to navigate, where do I even start? This is a really good starting place. So we can help, we can help there. And I think there's other questions coming in. So um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to answer what I can. I just submitted a translation on what you said, but if there are any questions. Uh, I, I have one other question for you, Marisol. Uh, can they find this information on social media? Is it being placed out there and amplified? So it will be. Um, so like I said, we, we, we're ahead of the curve here. So thank you, Isabel, for, for offering that because I think sometimes what happens is that um, because we don't have all of the information or everything's not open yet, sometimes we hold back on getting people prepared. And I know that part of your intention today was to make sure that people were listening out for these resources that are to come. And so once these are open, you're going to want to follow these organizations. Again, YWCA, uh, Community Foundation, Women's Foundation. Follow these folks on social media, track them, um, whatever your social media platform is, whether I think uh, most of these are, are very active on Facebook. But, you know, some folks have Twitter, some folks have Instagram. Follow them. Um, because that's going to be a good place to, to get informed. Look at their website. That's another spot um, where most of the applications I'm anticipating are going to roll out of. Um, and then, of course, I provided their phone numbers. So leaving them messages and just finding out, you know, where, where they are in the process so that you can be ready when, when these open up. And... Um, and just continue to be proactive in that. Of course, there's, there's a limit sometimes. We don't have all the information. I, I know that I've been um, touching base with them to make sure that, that I'm aware so that as soon as I know, y'all will know. But sometimes the community knows before we do. And so it's, it's good to keep, to keep on it. We have another question, which is um, the communication to uh, the South Side or Sp Spanish speaking mm -hmm. community, is there a plan uh, translation I'm assuming that will be sent out so that these services are, are available and they're Absolute, aware? Absolutely. So my primary focus has been to support Spanish speaking um, entrepreneurs in the Spanish speaking community. So some of the things that I've already done um, and the, the economic initiatives team has already uh, began as well as the mayor's office. The mayor's office has been very communicative uh, with regards to these funds, is sending out press releases. Um, I know posting on social media, the mayor's office specifically is very, very active on Instagram and on Facebook and getting out this information so that as many community members as possible know that this is coming. But we also know that um, in our community, a lot of times this face-to-face -face is the most important thing, right? Um, la comadre que me dijo que estos fondos ya se van a abrir, that's more important than hearing from alguien de la ciudad me, me dijo que no sé qué. It's more important that, that opportunities like this are, are critical because we know that your networks um, are the place where most people are gonna find that information. And so some of the things that are super helpful for, for us is if you see it, share it, repost it, talk to folks about it because um, you can help us get the word out and your networks are gonna have a reach that we don't always um, we don't always have, and so we have a really big platform as part of the city. Um, we have been intentional about making sure that this partnership um, is is open and people are aware of it. Pero siempre hay um, huecos en ese en ese esfuerzo. Entonces nosotros estamos haciendo lo más que podamos para que la gente sepa acerca de estos recursos, pero aún 
si ustedes nos pueden uh, ayudar en amplificar ese mensaje, um, the more help, the better. And so, yes, we have been um, active on social media. We have been active um, sending out press releases. We're doing engagements like this. Um, we will be doing, as soon as this is open, open, and the registration process is open, we have a few interviews lined up. So it will be um, radio, social media, that kind of stuff to, to help get the word out. Marisol. Mande. Um, yo podría ayudar porque yo visito mucho a los, a los um, negocios, salones de belleza, todo lo que, todos los negocios allá en el sur. Yo podría ayudar si me dan flyers, llevar personalmente a la gente y explicarles porque mucha gente no, uh, mucha gente no tiene el tiempo o no están en las redes sociales. Uh, y, y estos dueños de negocios, los pequeños allá en el sur, necesitan mucha, mucha ayuda en esa, en esa cuestión de darles, uh, como dicen, uh, en la mano, sí, ayudarles claro. a, a, a darles orientación en todo esto, para, porque sí necesitan la ayuda de, de, esta, de estos préstamos o de esta, de esta ayuda para so, su negocio. Sí, los subsidios. Yeah. So, quiero, quiero que sea muy claro que este programa específicamente son subsidios, son dávidas que se van a entregar, que, que no se tienen que volver a pagar. Um, lo, el programa anterior sí era un préstamo um, y estos ya están cerrados y se van a, ya van a comenzar a, a dar información acerca de quién recibió esos préstamos. Um, pero gracias, Leti. Sí, definitivamente todo el apoyo que se puede dar uh, súper, súper uh, importante. Um, I think that these also through these nonprofit organizations, the networks and the reach that they have is also really part of, of, of why um, we wanted, I, I know we wanted this collaboration to happen um, because they are really on the ground and in the community and have the capacity, the know-how and the experience to deliver these kinds of supports. And so these three organizations specifically um, have been doing that for a really long time. And, um, and we'll also be amplifying the city's efforts to get the information out. So it's not only us working to get the information out, but it's also the organizations that are going to be getting the information out. You're on mute, Carla. One more question from Carla. Yeah, you're mute. <laughs> you're fine. Sorry about that. I I was listening to everybody and I thought I was like in the mix. Sorry, I apologize. So my last question, I guess, it might be an obvious answer, but um, since these funds are from the city of Tucson, well, they're technically federal funds that the city of Tucson is issuing out. Um, what are the limitations as far as geographically? Um, are people from South Tucson um, eligible? Are people from Sawarita eligible? What are, is there a limitations as far as city of Tucson limits? Yep. Yeah, that's, a, that's another great question. So um, it is the city of Tucson and the city of South Tucson. So the designation is that area. You need to be in that, in, the, in those geographical boundaries. Um, but the city of South Tucson is, um, anybody within the city of South Tucson is also eligible for these funds. So if you are in the 85713 zip code, that is the city of South Tucson, you are eligible and you do have to be within the boundaries of the city. The same with, The, the last loans that came out, there were folks that had questions about, well, I'm in Oro Valley, or I'm in Sabarita, or I'm in Vail. Um, those were separate municipalities, and so um, that, was, that was a little bit separate. Um, and then the criteria that, that was in place for those was that they needed to have a business license within the city of Tucson. So that's one of the, I believe, the markers that's still going to be applicable for this subsidy, especially if you're a small business owner and you want to apply for the small business funds, then your service area can extend beyond the city of South Tucson, I believe, or the city of Tucson, I believe, but your licensing should be and needs to be within the city. Perfect, all right, yeah, great. Good question, yeah. And if there's other questions, I um, only had those to offer again, the small business helpline, uh, 837-4100. Um, there's English and Spanish support there. Um, you will probably have to leave a message and somebody gets back to you within 24 hours, but um, this, is, this is a good area to, to get started with anything related to the city.
Do we have any questions? There's been some very good dialogue so far. Yeah, there's been some great questions. Thank you for that. No. Well, Marisol, I, I, we really appreciate you taking time to help us keep our community and members informed. Um, this is uh, great information. And I, something you said that's key is the sooner we get it out, the sooner people can prepare and we are grateful for this opportunity to be able to share it. So thank you, thank you for taking time. Yeah. I think our members are appreciative too. Any last uh, thoughts you'd like to share with us? Yeah, no, just thank you again for the opportunity and for working so hard to keep folks in mind. Um, we are always working to leverage relationships, expand them, be able to collaborate with community members. So thank you also for those folks who, who extended an offer to support and to help. Um, there is a new program and this is the, the final um, kind of thought that I wanted to put out there to folks because this is a new program that just rolled out. It's a partnership between the county and the city. It's called um, HOUND, H-O-W-N-D. And it's out of, um, the company's out of Tempe um, in the Phoenix area. But the HOUND program is specifically designed to support small business owners in a buy now, use later kind of way. So it's, it's essentially a gift card uh, or coupon program that is designed to help small businesses immediately. And so the Hound application, um, and, I, and I mean, when I say application, I mean like the Hound app, not like a physical application, but the Hound app is up, it's open. Um, you can get it on our website, connecttucson.com, and you can look there. It's called uh, My Hound. Um, it's an app where if you're a small business owner, you can um, essentially connect with thousands of potential consumers uh, in your area, providing um, gift cards and coupons and all kinds of discounts where you will actually get those funds in your hands, in your pocket as a small business owner now, even if, um, for example, your service isn't available quite yet. And so um, if you're a beauty parlor or if you have a, a cleaning business or whatever whatever it is that you offer um it, it puts you in contact with community members who are looking for that service and can buy from you today so that's available completely free it's a program that was started in partnership with the city and the county once that um all of those memberships are used it's kind of like a first come first serve once they're used up they're they're gone but it is a, a free membership. And so I wanna encourage as many small business owners as possible to get on that platform, to check it out. It is available at connecttucson.com. It is available in Spanish. We did all of the Spanish support. So there is a My Hound in Espanol. Um, so if you have questions about how it works, there are folks that can help you in English or in Spanish to not only access the platform, but how to use it, answer the questions. We have a street team out right now that's been um, knocking on doors, haciendo estas encuestas para poder apoyar a nuestros negocios. Um, but one of the things that we're finding is that folks are a little bit hesitant. So I wanted to use this moment to let people know it is a real program. It's not a scam. Um, I've had business owners calling me and saying, Marisol, is this a true thing? Yes, it is. Um, and the city of Tucson and the, and the county have really partnered on it because it's just another tool to help support small business owners in Tucson. So um, check it out, connecttucson.com. It's called My Hound, um, and the app is called Hound. You can download it on your cell phone. You can get um, linked up to also what other um, what other businesses in Tucson are already using the service. It's really cool. I think as of yesterday, there were 15 offers from food to restaurants to service to, I think there was like even like a lash company on there. That was really cool. I wanted to check out, um, but check it out. And if you have any questions, 837-4100, we can help you there. And just to clarify, that one is uh, because it's a partnership between Pima County and the city that extends out beyond the city it limits, does. right? So it absolutely does. So if you're outside of those, those uh, our city metropolitan area, you can still access it and there still will be resources available um, for you for that program. But it is a, a first come first serve. So you wanna sign up. Um, sign up your business, sign up your service, sign up on the platform. And really it's to connect you with customers that can walk into your door. There is some criteria. You do have to actually have a brick and mortar shop. So that's one of the, one of the things um, you want to 
the purpose of it is to drive traffic to your organization. So um, check it out. And if you have any questions, let me know. And then just my last closing thought is we do have a training this evening at six o'clock. So acompáñenos a aquellas personas que están uh, este, en necesidad de servicios y talleres en español. Nosotros hemos estado proveyendo estos talleres um, todo, todos los jueves uh, a las seis de la tarde y también se pueden registrar en connecttucson.com o con Isabel en, del, en el, la Cámara de Comercio Hispana. Muy bien. Muchas gracias. gracias. Thank you again. Yes. Gracias a Marisol uh, Flores Aguirre for tomar este tiempo con nosotros. Thank you to all of you for taking time to be with us. And again, Marisol, we thank you for helping to stay a little ahead of the curve and keep our members informed and connected. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great Let's day. Have you. a great day. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>